Hello, welcome to Let's Grow. Uh, we're in the new Garden Shop Nursery with Marnie. Marnie's a resident expert on organic matter, uh, organic gardening, I'm organic sorry. gardening bulbs. Bulbs, and we're gonna to talk today about fall bulbs. Right. And a little bit about spring bulbs. Sure. Okay. Sure. So what is it, the important things that you want people to know about your bulb selection here? Well, first of all, thank you for coming to the new Garden Shop Nursery, and all the activity is getting ready for our grand opening October 3rd and 4th. 3rd and 4th, they're gonna have a really big event that, um, has all kinds of fun things going on. Oh, all kinds. And then and we're going to have our organic specialist, Myla Seamus, the owner of Dr. Earth. Okay. So let's get to the bulbs. Okay. I think it's very important that, that you need to know that there's bulbs you plant in the fall for spring color and bulbs you plant in the spring for fall and summer color. And we get a lot of customers that will call us in the spring going, oh, do you have any tulips? I'm ready for some tulips. It's too late. So the bulbs that you see behind me and around the store, these are fall planting bulbs. And the reason why is they need cold chill to set a bloom. So you have to plan a little bit. You have to plan ahead. Um, the other thing that I recommend is, although you see them all here now, buy what you like because most nurseries get one big shipment, they're finished. So you'd buy them, take them home, store them in a cool, dry place with not a lot of light. And I start about Thanksgiving and that's when I start planting because I don't want them to come out too early. I go ahead, get them, get them ready to go and then I start planting later in November until I just can't plant anymore or I've run out of bulbs. So you're worried that if they plant them now, they'll they'll green up. Exactly. And okay. with the right temperatures that we have, the, you know, it'll get cold and then it'll get warm again. So the later you plant them, the later in the spring you're going to enjoy them. Okay. Okay. Now the second thing about planting bulbs is you'll see that the packages, we've got lovely packaging. This is part of the whole deal. When you shop at a good retail environment, you're going to see good packaging. And it's going to tell you all about the bulb. It's also going to tell you how to space them, how deep to plant them. Well, I take that and I add a couple of inches to that, two or three inches deeper than it tells you. Mm -hmm. Two things happen, Diane. First of all, they're going to come out a little later. Our springs aren't always so enjoyable, so a little later is good. And secondary, because we all do suffer from wind, a little deeper is going to keep that bulb more steady in the ground. It's going to make it a little bit stronger. So you're saying the stem will be a little shorter? Yeah, a little bit shorter. So they I, won't lodge over. They won't lodge over. Okay. And, and, that's really, and, and that's really important. But if they want to have those happy spring flowers, earlier then you plant see i always get a lot of kick out of seeing those coming up like really early well and, what's and early have, for you well you know like march February. Ah, yeah agreed agreed okay so i've got daffodils coming up and i want to get those in my house where i can like think okay. about spring I, I didn't think about that but yeah. for those who might want so you bulbs are planning it's when, where I want to have the color, mm -hmm. when I want to have the color, and the gardener, the planter, has all the, has all the. Uh, so what happens if they plant them too shallow? What's going to happen is they're going to heave out of the ground. They're going to come out too early. They're and going to what freeze. Is, what, let's, what is heaving? What does it, that mean? It's going to push itself out of the ground. And there's also frost heave. And there's also frost heave, and that's okay. when you get cold chill. You, I'm sorry, you get cold thaw. Mm -hmm. And when you get really warm and then freeze and then freezing and then warm and all that, mm -hmm. it's going to push them up and out of the ground and right. they're going to freeze outside the ground. And frost heave is one of the reasons why you get all the rocks out of your garden and then they keep appearing. <laughs> Isn't how that, does, how does that work? Yeah, it's just like magic. It's magic. <laughs> it's freeze right. thaw at its finest. Mm -hmm. And would they freeze if they were too shallow? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Bulbs are a great plant for longevity, especially the narcissus. The tulip is one of the most recognizable flowers. It is my signature flower. Mm -hmm. I love everything about the tulip. However, they're not the longest living perennial. And I want people to understand that not only are they not the longest living perennial, they are a delicacy to every animal known to me. Right. Dogs, so, squirrels, rabbits. Tulips are the ones that you have to put in an area that is safe from that or in a container, but they will be eaten, guaranteed. And, and I know people who have built little cages to plant their tulips in, uh, mm -hmm. and Me then too. they find the little cages in the yard because they've been dug up by squirrels. So it's a it's a big battle if you've got squirrels or rabbits. Right. That it's going to be difficult to have tulips. Containerizing them is the only way I have been successful in Washoe Valley growing tulips, and okay. I put the containers near the house so I can guard them. However, there are a wonderful variety of bulbs that you can put out. Nothing's going to eat, and that is going to be our daffodil family. And or the, narcissus. When she says narcissus. Okay, Narcissus is the botanical for the daffodils, mm -hmm. but you get a beautiful, beautiful tall yellow flower. Mm -hmm. They're not only poisonous, so the critters won't eat them, they're very long lasting. Their longevity compared to tulips is tenfold. And you mean as in the soil? 
in the soil. Yeah. Once you plant this, you're going to have blooms longer than right. we're going to be here. Yes. It'll outlast us, right, Diane? Right. Mostly. <laughs> yeah, and especially if you lift them and separate them, you'll get that many more. So you almost get sick of them. Exactly. Well, real quick, let me see. Here's what she's telling you. Mm -hmm. Is they're in the ground. It's going to bloom. It's going to die back on its own time. And when it does, it's going to put on. You know what they call this in Amsterdam? No. They call it a daughter. Okay. Just like a girl, a daughter. And then what they'll do is break those off, plant them, and let them get bigger. And that's how they, that's how they hybridize them and grow them in, right. in Amsterdam. And, and they have more and more variety in, in daffodil narcissus than they used to. So you get Absolutely. a lot more variety in color. You've it's got, not like it's just yellow. It's just not yellow. You've got pink and white with a lot of petals. You've got this beautiful white one with its gorgeous center. Mm -hmm. And I like the plain white every once in a while. But I am actually using more and more narcissus in my yard than ever before. Right. Along with, you mentioned a great plant, the frutillaria. Mm -hmm. For, and there's a lot of different frutillarias. Mm -hmm. and, and they are really actually spectacular. Not as long lived, though. Yeah, but in, yeah, I, I, you're right. I don't think this does them justice, but when you see them coming up in the spring mm -hmm. and you plant it with the right companion planting plant, you have a gorgeous, gorgeous. And then the crocus. First thing that blooms. They're almost weedy. They're I almost mean, weedy. Yeah, along with the, the, um, the grape hyacinth oh, and the hyacinth, oh my, and the smell. The smell is to yeah, die for. Exactly. Um, one of the things is uh, I wanted to talk about it. I don't know if we're ready for that, but forcing. Forcing is, is there's only two bulbs that will force without being cold chilled. That was going to be your paper white mm -hmm. and your amaryllis. Right. When I say cold chilled, let's say I well, wanted... And you can do hyacinth. Hyacinth are, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty regular. But for sure, mm -hmm. a paper white and an amaryllis will bloom beautifully without, for, without cold chill. Right. The cold chill, again, will remind our, our viewers, the cold chill, the, the, the cold that's get, is going to enhance... Is, sorry. I guess you're going to have to edit this out. <laughs> it's okay. It's just going to, the cold chilling basically causes bloom. Sets in the flower. Bloom. It causes right. bloom. Lilacs needed. Right. So same thing as the lilac. Apple, there's a bunch of trees and, and, and shrubbery that need to be cold. Apples need it. There's a whole bunch of them. They just need to be cold. There's a lot of seeds that actually need to be cold to germinate. Right. So it's not that uncommon for plants that evolved in a cold climate to be need to be cold to do their flowering thing. Exactly. Okay. But let's say I wanted some tulips at Christmas. Mm -hmm. You should have planted them or put them in the refrigerator. And when you bring them out after six weeks and you put them in warm sun and some nice soil and hot water, they're going to shoot out of that. Right. But you can certainly take a, a paper white, set it in a little tray of water, put it in the window, and it's going to come out and bloom in in, in three or four weeks mm -hmm. you'll have a bloom yeah and 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 if you like that i can't stand the smell a I'm, lot of people I'm, love it it's usually if you're forcing in the winter time right. it's enclosed and the, and the, the smell is so <laughs> cloyingly sweet you know so you have to be sure that that's what you really want it's very pungent so buyer yeah. beware it'll actually um it's not really good for my asthma i mean actually will wheeze yeah, yeah so here. i love looking at them they're actually working on trying to cut down some of that smell yeah which is kind of, well, it's kind of tragic but you know yeah, I, I agree. They're, yeah, double-edged sword there. Yeah. But again, in the amaryllis, it's, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. that is a bulb, and I think people think it's a Christmas flower. But you can, you can have an amaryllis bloom year after year after year with the proper care. Right. And here at the Garden Shop Nursery, and I know all independents, we want you to succeed. We want you to have all the information you need. So there's a lot of misinformation out there, but you come in, and we're going to guide you the best way we can, what we know that works. Right. I'm a bulb grower. I'm a, I'm, I'm a nursery worker, so I can tell you how to grow bulbs. Right. And w one of the things that when you're, we're talking about buying bulbs, let's talk about quality bulbs. Oh, big, so, big problem. Where, where's my... We had it down here. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. so I brought this in. It's a bulb that was bought another place. Um, it's a tulip, or not a tulip, it's a... It's a narcissus. Narcissus bulb. And you can see that it's kind of shriveled. It has a little bit of icky stuff. Right. It's um, small. It's small. So it's a young bulb. Now, this will grow. Yeah. It will grow. You'll get smaller blooms, and it'll take longer for it to be a large bulb and have large blooms. Okay? Yeah. So, and then a lot of times, especially in packages, they put in, like, uh, sawdust. Yes. And you can't actually see the bulb. 
And, and it's supposed to be somewhat moist, and sometimes they sit around too long and they dry out or right. they rot. Right. So you have to be really careful when you're buying stuff that you can't actually look at the bulb. You can't touch and feel it because you want to feel it, right? You, you don't want a squishy bulb. So like in this package here, I can see this bulb. Yes. And in this package up here, I can see every single bulb in here. And, I and can, you can touchy feel it. Yeah, you can oh, tell. They're all firm. They're not gushy. Right. You do not want to buy a gushy bulb. There's no big lesions on them. You can, right. Sometimes you can actually see... Um, bacterial lesions, okay. you can see fungal lesions on right. them. And so if I had a choice and I'm going to pick them, I'm going to go for the one mm. like this. Nice, big, firm one. Right. Okay. And, and on this one, if I could bring it up real quick, you could actually pull this off and plant it along with. Right. Now you might not get a bloom the first year, but you certainly would have a plant and then the, it would each year you'll get more and more. Right. And can we really quick cover what we're going to do in the fall and you know in the spring after these bloom and how we want to take care of them? Absolutely, go ahead. Okay, you've you you planted these. They've come out. You've enjoyed every last bloom. I don't want you to cut the leaves off when they're green. It is very important that you understand this year's leaf is next year's flower. So wait till they really dry up into a nice brown state. I like to take them and tie them down into big wads and let them go dormant on I their like own. I like to braid them. Braiding them I like to good. braid them and fold them. So and it's up to you yeah, how you want to do they're it. They're out of the way, but you're letting all the energy from the leaf drop back down into the root and start the whole process. If you cut those green leaves off, next year you'll get a beautiful green plant, but you won't get a, a Another flower. thing I caution you to is, is braiding or folding them too early. You really want to give them a chance to start to photosynthesize. So right. when you see some of those leaves starting to turn brown is when you then want to start time. to fold and braid. And then pull the water back. That'll help that, That'll right. help set them to dormancy a little quicker. Just stop watering them. And well, if you're soft. like me, you've got bulbs, or perennials on top of bulbs, so you don't oh, want I to do pull too. the water back. So. <laughs> okay. Be caution there. Right. So now, what kinds of soils would, you, would prevent you having a good bulb crop? Heavy clay soil that didn't drain. Yeah. I made this mistake when I first bought my first house up in the Northwest. It's very clayey soil. Okay. And I planted a bunch of bulbs and I ended up with rotten no, bulbs. Nothing. Yeah. They have to have to have drainage. Mm -hmm. She and I do agree that they're not the heaviest feeders. Mm -hmm. I'm an over nurturer. I love, I fertilize with my, my, I love the Dr. Earth. I do fertilize, but I use his bulb fertilizer because I think it's formulated for them. However, Diane is absolutely right when she says, just plant them in a good soil. Right. Just get them in there, get them established, and then you maybe could pick up the fertilizing for nice, bright, colorful flowers. One of the things is that any, if you buy a good quality bulb, a really good, strong bulb, you don't really need to fertilize the first year. Okay. If you've got other plants in, in the ground, you know, it's not going to hurt it. It's, it certainly isn't going to hurt it, but you don't need to. Now, when the second year comes along, you need a good balanced fertilizer, and I recommend that you have a soil test. I used to not be, be a believer right. in a soil test, but now we have a lot of venues for soil testing. You can get it done through the well, extension um, office. The, the extension now is offering soil tests for a minimal fee. I think it's fifteen or twenty dollars. You can call out there to the university at seven eight four four eight four eight and give them a call. And I know that on a privately, Ferguson's irrigation is doing them, mm -hmm. and I don't know who else. But I'd love to know so we could pass this information on because yeah, just going out there willy nilly and and putting stuff in the soil before you know isn't always well, the best and idea. I don't, I don't know if you guys sell them here, but I've been at nurseries that sell soil tests, and they tell you, they give you a little color and everything like that. Well, that's and for pH balance. No, just, they actually have oh. nutrient ones. And the thing is, you get this color, and it kind of says high, low, medium, but it doesn't tell you how many pounds per yeah. thousand square feet. Yeah. So in these soil tests, it'll give you an estimate of the pounds per square we, and, and I'm getting a nod. We do carry those soil test kits here so at the garden So it gives you an indication nursery. of what you need to add. Exactly, because maybe you don't need it. I know that I got my ears boxed because the calcium was tied up. I had calcium in the soil, mm -hmm. so adding the eggshells didn't hurt it, but it didn't need it. Mm -hmm. I just had to water properly. Right. And my plant did great. Yeah, that's a common problem. Another thing right. is, is that, um, you know, most of the soils in Nevada, most if not all of them, but most of them don't need any potassium. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And, and a lot of people add, you know, um, ash. Right. And so yeah. we're getting off the subject, but they, they add their ash from their fireplace in, right. and they're adding potassium mostly. And it's very alkaline too, which we don't really need. And so, but, you know, I also know these people who poured everything they can in their soil. And so they've got a lot of organic matter that counteracts the ash. Let's so. test the soil, then we'll know what we need to put That's in. That's right. So we have That's those right. tests here. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get one for my property. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So anything okay. else you want to tell me about bulbs? Uh, they're lovely. 
they're sturdy and, and in the spring when it's been all dark and wintry, there's nothing more beautiful than checking out bulbs that are popping in your yard. I just think they're But you have to plan in the fall yeah. for your spring plan flowers. Plan now. Yes. Buy them now and start planting into October and all the way in. It's the same thing too for what happens is in the nurseries, because I used to work in nurseries, is people come in in the spring for their spring flowering yeah. shrubs and you know what plan now for that even though they're not flowering in the nursery now if you want exactly your neighbor has a lilac like you've always wanted now's the time to buy it put it in now and then yeah. you have blooms right so um okay. we're going to take a little break okay and we're going to set up and show you how to properly plant great thanks okay. do you know that stroke targets by color odds are if you're african-american you're twice as likely to suffer a stroke as white Americans. Know where you stand, because beating the odds isn't about winning, it's about living. Join the power to end stroke at strokeassociation.org. Anyone else? My name is David, and in eight years, I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, David. Hi, David. I'll start drinking in middle school, just at parties. But my parents won't start talking to me about it till high school. And by then, I'll already be in some trouble. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. The thing is, my parents won't even see it coming. So start talking. Who's next? Before they start drinking. Okay, welcome back. We're here. We're going to talk about planting. Um, first off, what's the first thing? The, well, the first thing is to decide to get a container. Um, am I going to have a container to match the house or wherever you want to put the container. The first thing you need to know is I need a container that can handle the outside temperatures. And if I wanted to plant in something that's real light and flimsy, I could plant in there, but then I'd need to store them in a place where they're not going to, they're going to get to about 32 degrees and stay. They're not going to get down to 15 and 16 degrees. So you want a little bit of insulation. You need some insulation. Mm -hmm. The second thing you can do with these containers, if you're a little nervous, one of the best things to wrap a memo in the winter is bubble wrap. Mm -hmm. Wrap it around, strap it on. They're, they're going to get to one temperature and stay there. Because they all, these eventually always freeze crack. Yeah. Eventually. It you buy a container, it's going to crack. Eventually, yeah. Eventually. So, so just, just understanding that, what kind of a container. What I use at home that works perfectly for me mm -hmm. are the half wine barrels. Perfect. Okay. All right. They're great. And then the wood is very insulating. It's very insulating. And, but, you know, they have these new pots now that are kind of foamy. They work well. I do have some, some bulbs in a, in a uh, nice but how, how do they, do they free? I'm just worried that they'll get a crack in water again and then they'll like open so up. So far, them. I think it's about four or five seasons and so far, no. Okay. I have bulbs in the top and then I've got Vinca Major growing okay. over the top. It's lovely. Okay. So what I decided was, uh, you know, this is a beautiful orange pot. Why wouldn't I put something white in there? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking color, and it's really important. If you're going to have this at your entry, try to think some color through. So I have a cream color house, this lovely orange, you know, it's bright. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to put white in there because I want it kind of subtle. So the most important thing is, we talked about earlier, good drainage. The container has to have drains at the bottom. Mm -hmm. If water doesn't come out, you will not have, you will be very unsuccessful. Do not put gravel in the bottom of your pot to Do not Agreed. It is not. Just use soil all the way, all the way down. These things are going to root in and they're going to need that, that mm -hmm. nutrition. So I've decided I'm just going to pick a nice white flower with this nice orange pot and I'm going to put my soil in. Now when I buy soil in the bags it's always pretty dry. Mm -hmm. So I get it prepared and I'll put this in and I'll just water it in. Mm -hmm. I might do that the day or two before. You know, they're just watering soil. But soil is a live organism mm -hmm. and I want that microbes to be eating that organics to feed my roots. Right. If the, if the soil's alive and the roots can eat, you will be successful. Yeah, because because the bacteria and the, and the fungi in the soil actually form a relationship with the roots that right. allow for nutrient um, absorption. Exactly. People don't realize that. For a long time we basically tried to keep as much organic matter out of our soil because we believed in disease and insect um, transmission. Wow. Oh yeah, and you know they burn the soil and all that kind of stuff, and it was just easier. But now we're finding that a, lo right. a lot of it is very important. I have the brightest, most beautiful bulbs I've ever had in years because mm -hmm. I do take care of them. So I've decided on what I want to do, and then I, I pick these because you see they're starting to come out. This mm -hmm. is a paper white. It's going to mm -hmm. be a white bloom, but this is kind of clear which side I plant. Many people call <laughs> in when they're planting. Um, can you help me out? One of the hardest is ranunculus. Mm -hmm. I think the ranunculus and the anemones. Because they just look You the don't same. know. Yeah. This is pretty clear. There's a little bit of a root there. 
root down mm -hmm. this green side up. But let's say you won't, we don't have anything with the top on it. There's one probably back here. See, that's pretty clear. There, there's no growth, but you can still right. tell. And, so and kind of look for the form. But, you know, this happens quite a bit. Mm. And, and a lot of times it doesn't, it, it matters, but sometimes it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, because it, now if you were to plant it this way, this is going to come up. Right. It's, that's its job. The general rule mm. of thumb is, and, my, and one of my horticulture professors told me this, he goes, you always have to remember plants need water and roots grow down. And I thought... That's Who doesn't one. know that? Yeah. <laughs> it turns out that the number one problem when you plants people bring plants back to nursery is water. Ninety nine point nine percent. I don't know how many times I had people who planted their bare root stuff upside down. Okay, so, you so know, he's right. Yeah, <laughs> <It> <laughs> professor's <laughs> right. You know, but that is true. Um, you know, when people walk in the nursery, the first thing we ask them, "How are you watering? Is it on a system? Are you doing it by hand?" Mm -hmm. And do you know? And do you know how fast or slow your soil drains? Mm -hmm. Mine drains really fast. Some don't doesn't mm -hmm. drain at all, and you right. need to know that. But especially for this. So what I've what I've done, I think the camera guy, Mark, can get this. I'm just putting these in here. Now you can plant these as far apart as you want or as close. Mm -hmm. I'm into dynamics. I want dramatic. When it says two or three inches apart, I give them about a quarter of an inch. I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind digging them up later and spreading them apart. But when I when I want color, mm -hmm. I want color. So I do end up almost every year moving. So when, and that's when, fine. Though. When she's planting this tight, you know, and it's fairly common to plant tight, because right. then you can get good coverage quickly. Um, the difference is she's going to have to water a little bit more. Uh, yes, I will have to water a little bit more, and it's a little more maintenance, which right. I don't mind. If, in fact, you want this to fill in and you don't want to fuss with it, then go ahead and space them. And I'm just kind of setting them in there. Again, I'm using the rule of a couple of inches deeper than the package. You will get a bloom. You will get everything you need. So I'm going to put them in there, and there they sit. How easy is this? So this is really simple because she's not planting into an existing pot. Right. Um, um, with dirt already in it, maybe roots already in it, but otherwise, right. so she's just going to dump soil on the surface. Um, so we don't have to worry about it, she just dumps soil on the surface. Otherwise, you got to dig down pretty deep. Now, now we talked earlier about fertilizing, uh -huh. and I'm, I'm, because I use Dr. Earth and I'm successful, very successful, when I plant my bulbs, I would give a handful, just one handful in this whole container. Okay. Just a little bit, just, a, you know why? Mostly probably for I feel better. Well, you know, you are going to, you know, I don't know about Dr. Earth or its products. One of the things that is, is you know, I say is you don't really need much for a you good don't. quality bulb. Right. You know, um, she's going to have this available for the green growth and, right. and setting it up for next year. Um, and, but, you know, one of the things they used to recommend is, you know, a handful per bulb, not a handful, but a you know, good quality per bulb in the hole, a bone meal. Too much. And there, there's a lot of things wrong with that. It, it basically offsets your calcium phosphorus balance. It um, plants will exude a, a, an organic acid that encourages growth of bacteria and fungi. Exactly. With the, with the um, phosphorus there, it doesn't happen, and so you, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. Another right. thing that happens with bone meal is that you get a lot of creatures. You will get a lot of creatures interested in what's going on. And then your dogs will be digging in there. Yes. So use it sparingly. You don't need to use a lot. Mm -hmm. But again, I just put a handful in, and then the only other time they get fertilizer is after they've come out, and I've got about three or four inches, a little bit on the top, water it, and they're done. Okay. And yeah. that's when I'm watering and feeding. Yeah, you've got you to kind of, you know, in America we have a tendency to think if the little is good, a lot is better. And in, yes. in planting, it's not necessarily true. It, it, exactly. Now, I am a big, I actually fertilize a lot. But you know, I'm, what, my primary goal is to get some coverage so that there's no weed, uh, weeds. Okay. With bulbs, it's a little bit dicier because you're never going to get really good coverage. So right, right, right. So so I mix everything in, and so that this soil is like prepared. And then once I put the other soil on top, mm -hmm. it's amount of watering. I'm going to water it in probably two or three times before I let nature take its course. And by that is to put it out in nature and let the snow and water rain that we're going to get this year, I'm counting on it, yeah. take over. But if in fact it's really dry, ladies and gentlemen, and you've just planted trees or shrubs or a beautiful container of bulbs, please get your hose out and once every four or five weeks, water those plants in. Mm -hmm. They need the water. Well, you know what else you can do? that works really well is you can go back buy a bag of ice and dump it on top of your uh, pots yep. and then exactly. it, it, when it when it's warm it, it melts in exactly. and when it's cold it's sitting there very waiting. slow release i water with ice cubes in my house for my house plants mm -hmm. so she's right but let's get let's make sure we think about our plants if it does get to be dry but right. i hear it's going to be a wet winter 
Okay then. I dreamt it. <laughs> so so that's it. So consider the pot. You know, color is important, but also quality, very so, important. Okay. So um, this is a little bit different than planting outside. So we're going to take another break, and we're going to go outside and do some planting outside. Open a book, you can explore new lands, meet new friends, and discover new adventures. There are amazing possibilities when you open your mind to reading. You can log on to the Library of Congress website and let the journey begin. <laughs> they've outgrown their toddler seat, they're still not ready for adult safety belts alone. Four foot nine is the magic number. Until then, kids need a booster seat. Make sure your little pumpkin gets there safely. Visit BoosterSeat.gov. Welcome back. We're here at um, the yard. We're going to plant yep. some. She started in the container. She's going to talk about planting outside. And so this is turning into the, the, the Marnie show. Now, Marnie has a radio <laughs> show. Yes, I do. I am the Impatient Gardener mm -hmm. on 1270 The Buzz every Saturday morning at 9. And you're going to be joining me October 31st. Right. So if you don't, guys don't make it for the third, right? October right. Third. Yeah. Yeah. Then you can always listen to Marnie on... Uh, the radio because right, we're going to do the show live from here that day that ought to be a hoot yeah it'll be fun well what we did inside was we actually plant we showed you how to plant this beautiful container but if you think about it the earth is a container so we came out to the front where we're going to have massive amounts of planting and ed and i decided that why don't we put something in here and these guys can come up in the spring so the other con the consideration we talked about drainage this mm -hmm. drained pretty well I mean, it's only really been about 10 minutes if right. that Mm -hmm. So we've got some soil here, again, because I like to make sure there's enough nutrients in there. You can, you can add some organic soil, bag of garden soil, just put anything in there. A couple things it's going to do, it's going to enrich your soil. It also helps with our... So you're not worried about, you're not worried about creating that, 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 you know, $25 hole for the $5 plant, huh? No, because this is a long-lived bulb, and if I do this now, I don't ever have to do it again. A little fertilizer once, twice a season, I'm done. Okay. So what I'll do is, uh, can I have the shovel, Mayor? Sure. Thank Absolutely. You. And we got the smallest shovel we could find. So I've dug a hole, and you can, you know, it's, it's clear we have decent drainage here. I'm really happy about that. Tons of rocks, which is fine, I guess. <laughs> but, but I, but I, I'm going to make a planting bed. I think I'll just for giggles. Now, look at how little I'm going to use. Okay, I'm just going to put a little in there. Mm -hmm. Mix it in. And then just put your bulbs in the same exact way we did a little bit earlier. Now, now when she did this before, she didn't put the dirt on top. She does want, in the pot, you would want to put dirt on the top and not leave them sitting on the surface of the soil, just like she's going to plant them now. Exactly. Thank you for that clarification. Because yeah. I, I Another thing is, is that if you're doing bulbs and you're not going to do a group planting like this where you want to dig a hole, you know, a bulb planter is, is really great. Actually, I've used bulb planters to plant in, into, a, into a perennial bed. Right, right. Um, even using putting annuals into a perennial bed, you know, makes a nice little hole. And, and it's it, perfect, and you're right. We were trying to find them, but because we're right in the middle of moving into our beautiful new site, couldn't find them. Yeah, and if you come down here, it, they're open. It's kind of like a, it's kind of fun. It's like a rummage sale. It looks a little bit like yes, that. Yes, but so, we're all excited. We're all yeah. on like cloud nine. Yeah. We have a new. So I have them in there, and I've spaced these a little further apart because I want them to naturalize. I want them each year to put on a new baby, and they'll they'll by I would say the next eight to ten years, I'll have a big cluster mm -hmm. of paper whites here. Right. Now, can you explain naturalizing like you well, did to me earlier? Well, naturalizing is when you have an area where you really aren't going to do, um, you know. Uh, bright showy planting you just want to have some color here and there and when you do that a lot of times you'll buy like a hundred or fifty to a hundred bulbs or even two hundred bulbs and in those situations you know just dig a trench a me meandering trench rather than do a hundred holes with a bulb planter and then you just set it in in a pattern that you like and you can and it's also nice because then you can actually if you're doing different colors you can make you know big swatches and things like that so that's what naturalizing is. That means that you bought a lot of bulbs and you're just going to put it in an area where you want some color, but you're not really planning on a formal bed. 
I hope I hope my manicurist doesn't see me out here doing this yeah, with yeah, my yeah. gloves on. I don't have a manicurist. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> yeah. just kidding. You know, my rule of thumb is with, because I you know spend so much time in the dirt is that if you yep. uh, break two nails and you got to cut them all off. That's right. Yeah. That's my rule. That's yeah. weird. We have the same rule. Wonder so, why. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're both gardeners. Yeah. There's nothing more beautiful smell to me than this old dirt. Now, we are at a the old Collin Ranch. Everybody right. knows that the garden shop bought the old Collin Ranch. So there's so much history here. But the dirt smells of history. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are nutrients in here. And I think people think it's, you know... It's totally nutrient free here. They've had trees, everything's broken down. Mm -hmm. There's nutrients in the soil. So I'm going to cover up these bulbs, but I'm also, you see I'm carefully taking some of the big rocks out. I don't want my bulbs to have to wind around a rock. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try to make sure to get most of the rocks out here. Now, you know what, if you don't wanna mess with it, if you're living someplace like up, uh, you know, on an old glacial moraine, like up on Mount Rose or something like that, it's almost impossible. They'll grow around it. It just okay. takes them longer to come up. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Well, these are my babies. I'm trying to take care of them. So, right. so let's say I'm getting all this done and I just think I don't want a big blank spot here. And you can do this on uh, with your containers. I forgot to do it. But when you're done planting, put a nice fall mum in. You've got summer, fall color, mm -hmm. and you've got spring color under here. Mm -hmm. So you've got a two season container right from the get go. Right. And these are going to last way, we've got weeks of weeks. Yes. We were talking, it's a little hot today and it's and these September are, and these 23rd. are infinitely hardy, so you don't have to worry about them dying. Infinitely hardy. Uh, I did have experience with rabbits. My rab the rabbits in my they neighborhood eat like them. them. Mm, so heads up for that. But you're going to have a beautiful spring show here. Imagine this plain looking rock with a beautiful white flower and a green leaf. Something that's hardy, something that's going to come back regularly. Right. It's it, Bulbs for me are just an invaluable part of my garden. Yeah, and you know, another thing is like, again, we're talking about bulbs now, but again, this is the time to think about if, if you're going to plant your fall bulbs, to think about your spring flowers. Yes. Um, what's going to happen. And so, you know, I'm looking at this and I'd, I'd want to put a, you know, some kind of shrub to show off the rock, right. you know, and all that kind of stuff. So you, you get really involved in it. Um, that's why I'm not allowed to go to nurseries more than once a month. Oh, oh, is that the real? Yeah, yeah that's the real. And I work at one, so I'm, <laughs> I, they, they have me on a do, money diet in there. Right. Don't sell to her. So again, but it's right. not just time for fall bulbs. It's time for, you know, thinking about your spring. And this is the best time to start planting. Yeah, what about a nice low-growing forsythia? Wouldn't that look that beautiful? Would, yeah, something that would, maybe the weeping forsythia, those are so much fun. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, so oh, there my you go. New, oh, those are like hot on the market now. But there's many things to do, very easy. Remember, it's about water. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that this gets water. When Ed said I could plant her, he said, well, who's going to water them? Yeah, I'll make sure they get water. Yeah, and she's gonna, not going to have to do with that long knock on wood. She says we're going to have lots of rain. We are. We say it's going to be a wet, nice winter. Snow, skiers, water for gardeners. Great. And so, you know, again, it's not, don't make it that complicated. You know, get what you like and, and you know, plant them in the ground. Right, and yeah. enjoy them. Yes. Enjoy every every moment of them. So I hope you got enough information to go out there and, and get encouraged and feel empowered to go and buy some bulbs. <laughs> you know, as always, I'm looking for volunteers. So if you're interested in volunteering with the city of Reno, give me a call. Um, I'm always available. And I really appreciate Marnie and the Garden Shop Nursery allowing me to be here. It's been our pleasure. We'll thank you for coming out and enjoying okay. our, our move-in day. You guys were the first guys here. Oh, great. <laughs> and thank you all for joining Let's Grow.